The first reading is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 6. But you, Bethlehem, Aretha, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she is in labour bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. We will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders, who will rule the land of Assyria with the sword, the land of Nimrod with drawn sword. He will deliver us from the Assyrians when they invade our land and march across our borders. The second reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Here Good morning. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that the words I say may be true to your word and lead us to the living word, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I wonder what you enjoy about being in church. One of the things I really enjoy is singing together and worshipping together. And I found a quote that reads, singing exercises your heart, lungs, and releases endorphins, making you feel good. I'm sure that those of you who like singing may be able to relate to that. I used to belong to the singing group and choir at Stapleton Church, and whenever I go back to join them, I feel there is something powerful in singing together. But perhaps not only singing together, but worshipping together, singing praises to God. In our Micah reading, we heard of the prophecy of Jesus' birth, and in our Luke reading, we hear Mary's song saying what God has done and will do through Jesus. So just as a bit of a recap about what happened before. Before this reading in Luke, Mary has heard from the angel that she is pregnant with God's son. She then goes to Zechariah's house and greets Elizabeth. John, later known as John the Baptist, leaps for joy in her womb and Elizabeth shouts for joy. Mary then says her song, which we now call the Magnificat, which has since been whispered, chanted, recited, and set to music with trumpets and kettle drums. Paula Gooder, in her book, Journey to the Manger, writes that one of the reasons why the Magnificat remains such a powerful song is because it is a near perfect example of worship. So what is worship? The dictionary in this context defines it as the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. I've heard it defined as getting in line with who God is. 
Prayer is getting in line with God's will. Worship is getting in line with who God is. When I worship, it expands my heart and increases appreciation for who God is, who I am, and the world's relationship with God. It draws me into a union with God and Jesus. Over Advent, I have been reading Tom Wright's Journey with the Apostles Advent book, and the first section is on Thanksgiving. He reflects that one of the things that distinguishes us from animals is our capacity to reflect, to understand what's going on, and then to express that understanding in worship. Worship is a central human activity, and certainly the most central Christian activity. So what is it about Mary's song that stands out, and how can we learn from it? So Mary begins by centering herself in her relationship with God and to state her intention of proclaiming God's greatness. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. She then says why she would do this, because he has looked with favour on her. She then goes on to use phrases and ideas from the whole of scripture outlaying God's nature. Much of it echoes the song of Hannah in 1 Samuel, but there are also echoes from Genesis, Deuteronomy and the Psalms. When we're stuck for words in our worship, we can use the Bible, the Psalms and other parts of it. And so many songs that we sing echo scripture. God's nature is to defend the weak, combat the powerful, demonstrate his mercy and transform lives. When we worship, we are meant to be transformed and become more like Jesus through our worship. We come to the altar singing, just as I am, and we, we can leave just as we were and just as we always live but we are meant to be transformed, becoming more like Jesus, ready to show mercy, defend the weak, and challenge those unjust structures where the most powerful ones are the only ones with a voice in our society. In worship, we gain a better sense of who God is and who we are in God. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. And Mary doesn't stop there. She recognises God's mercy isn't just for her, but for the place where she lived, Israel. In worship, we place God central in our lives, make him great, remember all the good things he has done for us, for the world, and the worship centres on God. Occasionally, it may be tempting to think, why am I here in church? Wouldn't it be better to be out there demonstrating God's love, rather than stuck in four walls, singing about and to God where we can't be heard? Wouldn't we be better living it? And yes, of course, that is a good thing to do. We exist as a parish church for the people outside these walls. But we get a perspective on who God is and what is important by worshipping and focusing on God. It's not a, we should be doing that instead. We should be doing that as well. Or we do that as a consequence of our worship. We come before God saying, just as I am, with our worries, our hopes, our dreams, our thoughts, and we bring them before God. In Romans 12, verse 1, Paul writes, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. 
It struck me as I was writing a sermon that Mary wasn't in the temple as she was worshipping God. She was going about life, meeting with Elizabeth. As we go about our everyday lives, how can we present ourselves in worship before God? Worship is more than I do in church every week, singing some songs. It is my relationship with God of heaven and earth who transforms me. So in everything I do, I should be conscious of presenting myself to God, offering myself before God, worshipping God in my work, in my house, offering my body as a living sacrifice. The message version translate that verse in Romans 12 verse 1 as, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. We are not called to worship because God needs it, but because by worshipping we experience the abundance and depths of God's love. When we get to know God, we have that relationship and can experience life to the full. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So at this Christmas season, when we think of Jesus coming to earth as a baby, as a human, as one of us, and going to the cross for us, so may we have life in all its fullness. May we bow down in worship as the wise men did and worship him, offering our lives in worship. And as we think of Mary, place God centrally in our lives, because as we worship, we will get more in line with who God is. Christmas is a time to remember when God took the initiative and came amongst us. It is a reason to celebrate and worship the Saviour, a God of mercy, justice and love. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for that privilege of coming to worship you. And we thank you that reminder of the nativity scene when the shepherds and the angels and the wise men worshipped before you. Amen. <laughs>